Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be returning to one of the more exciting discoveries of the last few years, the nearby planet known as Proxima b. And today we're going to be talking about this new study that had actually applied very interesting models from Earth and tried to discover if Proxima b could be terrestrial and potentially host life. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. In the last few years, our understanding of planet Earth has increased quite dramatically. Today we have some of the most complex models available to us that are able to predict various climatic changes on the planet very precisely. As a matter of fact, some of the modern simulations and some of the more advanced models that were created in the last few years were actually done with this beautiful supercomputer known as NASA's Discover supercomputer that's capable of executing something like several quadrillion operations at the same time, essentially equivalent to several thousand typical home computers. And all of this allowed us to create a lot of various climate predictions and climate simulations that are now actually very accurate and can be applied to pretty much a lot of things, allowing us to very accurately simulate water movement, atmosphere movement and various pressure changes on the planet. But the scientists using these supercomputers have realized that they can also now apply these models and these various predictions to other exoplanets, including some of the more interesting planets out there. More specifically, planets we've discovered in the last few years, such as the TRAPPIST-1 system planets, and more importantly, the closest exoplanet to us, the planet known as Proxima Centauri b, also known as Proxima b. Now this planet is very very interesting to us because of, well I guess, two main reasons. The first reason is obviously the distance. This is literally the closest terrestrial exoplanet to us, at a distance of just over 4 light years. This has already been sort of the location for all potential um, exploration and discovery missions, and several missions such as for example the so-called Project Breakthrough Starshot that's uh, planning to use these very lightweight probes that are going to be propelled by a tremendous amount of lasers shot from planet Earth is actually trying to find a way to explore this in a little bit more detail and to possibly have these probes sent there within the next um, 20 or so years. But obviously we're not really there yet, we're not actually able to go and explore these planets and we're not even able to actually see their atmosphere in detail either. None of the modern telescopes are able to unfortunately see what's happening here, except for the upcoming James Webb telescope. But until James Webb becomes operational in 2021, we have to find other ways to try to analyze these planets. And so some of the scientists decided to apply all of the Earth modeling software and all of the Earth modeling simulations to try to see what would happen in this system. So basically, what if we try to simulate what would happen here using the models we have on our own planet? And the thing is, it's actually not that easy, mostly because, well, for the most part, almost every exoplanet we've discovered is actually kind of weird if compared to any planet in our own solar system. Of all of the over 4,000 exoplanets we've discovered, pretty much the vast majority of them are absolutely not what we have in the solar system, and this actually makes our solar system the weird one, because everything else out there seems to be very, very different and in a sense similar to one another. And this of course includes planets like Super Earths, this includes planets like Mini Neptunes, and a lot of um, hot Jupiters, none of which are present in our own uh, solar system. And this of course includes this planet here, Proxima b. Now it is possibly terrestrial and it's actually possibly even very similar to Earth, it's located in the habitable zone, which is actually one of the main reasons we want to try to explore this planet. And apart from the habitable zone, um, it also seems to possess just the right conditions for possibly having liquid water. But there is one caveat to all of this, and this is of course the star that it orbits. Proxima Centauri is unfortunately what we call a flare star, or basically an M-type dwarf that seems to flare quite a lot. These stars, despite their relatively long age, they can live up to a trillion years, um, seem to possess way too much energy, or actually they seem to produce too much energy um, that they release quite frequently, and this one does as well. We've already detected a lot of really, really powerful flares, way, way more powerful than anything here in the solar system, coming out of the star and striking the planet. And some of these flares, according to our calculations, would actually very likely strip this planet of any atmosphere and any water. But this is why the scientists decided to investigate this in a little bit more detail by using the NASA supercomputer and by applying the Earth models. 
Now, before we do all of this, and before I explain to you what they've discovered, let's actually make this a little bit more realistic because the new version of Universe Sandbox allows us to create what are known as eyeball planets. And because we think that this is an eyeball planet, we're going to make it look a little bit more realistic here as well. So first of all, all of these planets are actually tidally locked. So I'm going to tidally lock this to the star. And as it becomes tidally locked, you'll see how it's going to transform within the next few seconds. So here, this planet will start acquiring a very typical eyeball shape. It's going to have one side almost entirely covered in ice, and then the other side is going to have, well, essentially liquid water. And here, it's probably not going to take too long for this to actually form, and we can even see how all of this transforms in real time by looking at the surface temperature graph. Here you can actually see one side is already becoming a lot warmer, the other side is slowly cooling down. And this will eventually turn this planet into the so-called eyeball planet. You can see how it's already transforming with one side having a little bit more water, the other side having a little bit more ice. And I think within just a few actual years of simulation is going to become this shape I'm looking for. And this is kind of what the final version of this eyeball planet looks like. And here you can see that there's a little bit more liquid water as opposed to some of the other eyeball planets I've mentioned in previous videos. And this is because this uh, planet receives a little bit more sunlight than some of the other planets. And one thing we're missing is of course clouds. And so let's add clouds to transform this planet a little bit more. The reason I added clouds is because some of the studies and some of the simulations believe that there is actually a possibility for these types of planets to have a really large amount of clouds right here due to the evaporation that's caused by the star itself. And as you can see in this simulation, these clouds can provide just the right conditions for um, water to stay on the surface, to be protected from all of the starlight, and also at the same time to create these very unique conditions not seen anywhere else in the solar system. So let's take a look at some of these simulations that were created by the scientists using NASA's Discover supercomputer. This is the first one, and this one here will show you what happens to um, this hypothetical planet if it has relatively large cloud cover, but at the same time being tidally locked, it doesn't seem to possess any ocean currents, and only some of the water circulates on the surface. So interestingly, the clouds here are really important. They provide quite a lot of albedo, which is reflectivity, and essentially act as a kind of a mirror. They do protect a lot of water underneath. And because of the cloud cover right in front of the star, it might actually create an even larger um, ability for this planet to support life. But if we were to remove the cloud cover, and if we were to look underneath, this is kind of what we would see. So this is what it looks like to have no actual circulation. Most of the warm water seems to be here in the front of the planet, basically the uh, part that's facing the star, whereas the dark side has some water, but most of it seems to be relatively cold. In other words, there's not a lot of thermal circulation here, and only one side of the planet is more or less warm. But this side could definitely support some sort of primitive life, possibly even more complex life if it's hidden from the star. The second simulation takes this a little bit further by adding the ability for water to circulate. And here we get a slightly different image, including a very different shape of the actual ice formed on the planet as well. So notice how now we have a lot of circulation, a lot of heat transfer, and both sides of the planet are more or less not so far off from each other in terms of temperature. The water is now able to circulate very actively and uh, is actually able to provide a lot of warmth and nutrition to any life everywhere on the planet. And this is one of the better simulations to indicate that life could exist here for sure. But remember, all of this is of course hypothetical for now. We're still not entirely sure what's really happening on these unusual planets. Then the other two simulations involved our own planet, Earth. So basically, the scientists placed our planet in the same position as Proxima b and decided to see what would happen to Earth if it was in this location because, well, first of all, our planet does have continents and so there's a land there. And second of all, um, we just wanted to see what effects this would have on our own planet. So in this simulation, you'll notice that if the Pacific Ocean was facing the star, this is kind of what would happen to our planet. It would basically have a very unusual circulation of water, but the darker side of the planet doesn't seem to have enough warmth or water actually doesn't even get there, simply because the continents actually block water circulation. However, if we were to reverse our planet and have Africa face the star, it would look entirely different. So here it really depends on what's really facing the star. So with Africa exposed to the star, 
We now have this circulation pretty much all over the place, including of course some of the southern parts of our planet, with Antarctica becoming one of the more proliferated regions in terms of the actual water circulation and potential for life. So this simulation shows us that it's really important to know where the continents are located, how the water circulates, and of course if there's a lot of other features such as for example a lot of clouds that could also create these uh, other effects. And the scientists behind the study believe that hypothetically there could be so many clouds on Proxima b that it could be almost like a massive sun umbrella that could deflect radiation, creating very unique but also hospitable conditions for life to proliferate. And a lot of the current models do suggest that there's possibly a lot of clouds here, assuming that the planets do have liquid water. Basically, most of the water here would be constantly evaporated, creating so much vapor and so much um, actual albedo effect that the planets would look very, very different from even what we imagine now. And so by changing various um, properties, like for example, ocean salinity, um, ocean depth, adding continents and so on, the scientists behind the study were able to figure out that there are a lot of various ways for planets like Proxima b and other planets, including those around TRAPPIST-1 system, to possess necessary conditions for simple life to evolve and to actually thrive on these planets. And this is somewhat opposite of what we used to say a few years ago when we just discovered that a lot of these stars are flare stars. They're very dangerous and produce about 500 times more x-ray radiation than our own sun. Now we have a slightly more optimistic view that even though there is a lot of radiation here, clouds and a lot of other features of these planets could protect life, water and atmosphere from damage and from becoming deadly inhospitable places where no life could ever survive. In other words, despite the danger of being around these stars, there is still a lot of simulations suggesting to us that life could be possible there. But I guess until 2022 and 2023, when we finally get some data from James Webb Telescope, we're not really going to know for sure if there is even any atmosphere here. We're not going to be able to see these planets just yet, and it will probably take a while before we can ever make it here. But nevertheless, we're probably going to try, at least at some point in the future. Because one day, we might be able to create technology allowing us to travel across vast distances of space, and when that day arrives, we need to make sure we have a lot of various hospitable planets to visit, because this is something we've been dreaming about for a very long time. But anyway, until then, or until we learn more about Proxima b, that's really it. Thank you for watching, check out some of the papers I mentioned in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, consider supporting this channel Patreon to help this channel grow, and most importantly, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.